The delivery of God's word is enhanced by the following. One, the holiness of the reader's life. Two, the prayerful preparation of the sacred text. Three, the way the reading is proclaimed, not simply recited. Four, by realizing the importance of the task they have taken on. Five, by applying the message of the readings to oneself. Now, here are a few important quotations to remember. Christ is present in his word since it is he himself who speaks when the Holy Scriptures are read at Mass. Vatican II documents. It is necessary that those who read at Mass should be competent for their task and carefully prepared for it. St. Paul VI. For in the sacred books, the Father who is in heaven meets his children and speaks to them with great love. Vatican II documents. Readers should make special efforts to develop a love and understanding of scriptures and thus become more perfect followers of the Lord Jesus. St. Paul VI. Now, to help you to prepare, I recommend the following. <coughs> Excuse me. Prepare at least the day before. Know what you are going to read well in advance, not when you arrive for Mass. Practice and become familiar and comfortable with the reading. Try and get the appropriate phrasing, emphasis and speed right. Remember... Failing to prepare is preparing to fail. On the day of the reading, read the passage fairly slowly, but not too slowly. By going too fast, the people won't take in the message. By dragging the passage, the reading loses its vibrancy and meaning. Stop when there is a full stop. Read loud enough so that the people at the back of the church can hear you as well as those at the front. If at all possible, direct your words to those in the back row. You're meant to proclaim the word of God and not simply read it. However, please don't read too loud or then it will appear that you are shouting at the congregation and the people will be put off. Even though everyone has a microphone these days, you're not meant to read the Word of God at Sunday Mass in a conversational tone. Some do, and people can't rightly hear or understand them. Approach the lection with the confidence of a spokesperson of God. Do not appear to apologise for your presence. Now, if you're very nervous, try to remember it is God's word that you are proclaiming and not your own. You are only God's instrument. Try and be his worthy instrument. Everyone, including the priest, is somewhat nervous. Some eye contact seems appropriate at times by looking up at the congregation now and again, but not every time you blink. You're giving the message an immediate efficacy. A start could be made by looking up when you announce the reading. For instance, a reading from St. Paul to the Romans. And at the end of the reading before you say, The Word of the Lord. You might also like to glance up at the congregation at the end of a paragraph. Correct enunciation is most important in addressing the congregation. Sound every syllable in each word and let us hear every soundable consonant and vowel. The T's must be crossed and the D's dentalised. Stress adjectives rather than nouns and the verbs and the adverbs rather than the verbs. Please don't stress prepositions unless the sense demands it. A 
very common fault is to chop the sentence into short chunks of five or six words, lowering the voice between each. Readers need to be aware of making every clause have the same tune, particularly with a descending tone at the end. This will have a lullaby effect on your congregation. Please use proper inflection and phrasing. When you come to a comma, it's best not to lower your voice until you've finished the sentence. Otherwise, the sense of the sentence tends to get lost and will have a numbing effect on the congregation. Now, some readers let themselves be ruled by their lack of breath or their inability to look ahead to the words in front of those they are in fact speaking. You should have already mentally read ahead to the end of the sentence before you say the actual words. If at all possible, please don't read with your finger moving along the page. It causes scratching. Try and put a bit of feeling into your reading by altering your tone. An unaltered tone will make the reading sound like a vacuum cleaner. To put a bit of feeling into the reading is not the same thing as being overly dramatic or condescending. By being over dramatic, the focus will be on you and not on the Lord. Some read, and I'm sure you've heard them, as if they were reading to small children, which can be off-putting for an adult congregation. Finally, try to remember that the reading is addressed to readers themselves, and that includes the priest. As a reader, our words are not the only means of communication. Body language is also important. Recent research has been done on the impression people make at interviews. It reveals that 54% of the interviewee's communication was through posture and gesture. How the person sounded was 38%, whereas what the person said was only 8% effective. Slouching up to the aisle and shuffling behind the lectern, then leading, leaning part of your weight on one leg and resting your forearm on the lectern itself surely indicates that you don't think what you are doing is anything very important. We know informality has its place, but it can very much cheapen the liturgy. Now for some things not to do. Never say, the first reading, or the first reading is from. Never say, the responsorial psalm, or the response to the psalm is, or the response is. Just read the response. Then look up at the congregation and they'll repeat it. Never say, please stand for the gospel. It's not the reader's job to give instructions to the congregation. That is the job of the commentator or priest. Never read the small print in italics at the top of the reading. That is meant for private reading. But do try and always read from the lectionary rather than the missalette. Go up to the lectern and check the reading in the lectionary before Mass. Reading from the lectionary gives more dignity to the Word of God. And for the bidding prayers, please be standing at the microphone before the priest begins the opening prayer and stay standing there until the priest has finished the concluding prayer. Do wait until the people are seated and settled before you begin the readings. Don't rush into it. 
Rushed liturgy is, I'm afraid, poor liturgy. And that also applies to the priest. Do read the page entitled The Use of Prayerful Pauses. It's very important and it applies to all readers. If the large book of the Gospel is used, the reader of the second reading needs to remove the lectionary in order to make room for the green book of the Gospels. As I said already, please allow the people to sit down and get settled before you begin the reading. Don't rush into it. According to new regulations, there should be a short pause after the reader says, The Word of the Lord. May I ask the organists or guitar players to respect this pause and not come in immediately with the readings when the readings are finished, with music or singing, please wait those few vital seconds. The same applies after the second reading. Please pause for a few seconds before you start playing and singing the gospel acclamation. We're talking here about very short pauses, not long, embarrassing silences. If there is one reader for the two readings and there is no singing, then the reader at the end of the reading, after saying the word of the Lord, should step back slightly from the lectern for that short pause, with head slightly bowed, before coming forward to read the psalm. The same applies at the end of the second reading before the gospel acclamation is said. If the acclamation or psalm is sung, and by and large they always should be, then it is the organist or guitar player or cantor who is responsible for the short pause. In this case, the reader goes immediately to his or her place at the end of the readings. If there are no pauses in the liturgy, you distinctly get the impression that the priest and ministers want to get it over with. Here are a few extra guidelines for readers. A good idea is to check the lectionary before Mass if you are on the reading on that day. Make sure the lectionary is open at the right page and it is the right Sunday. I normally have the lectionary open at the right page, but mistakes can sometimes be made. I notice some readers bring up the mass or the sheet or the bulletin or the missalette with them to the lectionary when they're reading. If you have checked the reading beforehand, this is hardly necessary. Having something in your hand while you are coming up and then reading could distract the congregation and portrays a kind of hesitancy in what one is doing. Thanks for taking note of the times when the big green gospel book is used in the Sunday liturgy. In those instances, the lectionary is removed from the lectern after the second reading. Please always check to see if the psalm and gospel acclamation are sung on the Sunday you are assigned to do the reading. If the reader does not know whether the psalm or gospel acclamation are sung, the resultant hesitancy on the part of the reader will send a slight ripple of unease throughout the congregation. The priest, the organist, the cantor and reader are meant to work as a team rather than in isolation. Everyone should know what everyone else is doing. Sometimes the priest can introduce the readings on Sundays, but it should always be quite brief and not a mini homily. When the entry procession approaches the sanctuary at the beginning of Mass, I would be more than grateful if the readers of service did not obstruct the priest or the deacon as he approach, approaches the altar. If at all possible, please try and move enough spaces to the right or the left so as to leave space for the priest or other sacred ministers to approach the altar. The normal practice of St. Vincent's, where I am, is that servers go to the right and readers to the left. 
Now, thank you all very much for listening and God bless you all. Oh.